Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. We are creating conscious community by sharing mindful manifesting skills and transcendental music. We are all in this together. Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. Mind 
Flow Radio. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. She's Jalen. And he is Monty. We have made it. One more week. <clears throat> I'll try that one again. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, I just got a couple frogs in my throat. You think it's the vid? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is the vid because there's one camera and there's another camera. There's this awesome setup oh, video. here. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> okay. I don't think the vid caught on except here in this house. I'm just going to move this mic for a moment. Hopefully it doesn't make too much noise. So we're going to talk about mindful living today. Yeah. So we're trying to get more organized here for something that's been super spontaneous. And the, so this show, Mindflow Radio, began... When was that? I think it was 2015? I want to say it was 2015. Mindful Radio? Well, it started as Sunday Sadna. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. WDRT. Yeah, we had a radio show for four years before we started this podcast. At least four years, I think yeah. it was. Maybe it was over. 2015. Okay. So we're going to talk about mindful living? Yeah, we're talking about what this is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it started as a radio show on WDRT with the idea of mindful entertainment. And <clears throat> and we have guests here and there as much as we can. And um, sharing mindful music and mindful living conversation. So it's entertaining and educational. Yeah. I would say. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we did that once a month for five years. And then COVID hit and everybody got sent home. We couldn't go in the studio anymore. And we're like, well, shoot, let's make one. So we took a room and... And made it into a studio. Yeah, and, and here we are. And here we are. So we thought we'd just share, like, what is Mindful Living? What is a Mindful Living podcast um, for anyone who's new? Like, if this is your first show or, uh, yeah, your first podcast, your first Mindful Living podcast. Well, in a, you know, in the bigger picture, Mindful Living or what we try and do with this podcast is give tips and techniques and experiences that mm -hmm. uh, allow us to live and be more mindful yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. And the more mindful we are throughout the day, essentially the more in balance our minds are and the more in balance our emotions are and the more equanimity that, that we um, embody. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal, I, I'm, at least my goal, I guess. Yeah. To help our culture evolve towards a more um, mindful kind of yeah. place. Yeah. So we're sharing the vibe of being mindful. And what is my, what is mindfulness? You know, I'll let you give, give your definition what first. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is... Mindfulness is a state of consciousness... Where, well, to ultimately to be mindful is to, to have space between your thoughts, right? It's to, it's to access that transcendental place. You have the thinking, the thinking mind, and the transcendental mind. And the thinking mind is the analysis. It's us analyzing information, data. You know, in, in our culture, we're way caught up in the thinking mind, like more so we're out of balance. And what we're trying to do is get into that transcendental place where the mind is actually not thinking anymore, but just in a place of pure on full on awareness. And I think if we can have a balance between the awareness and the analysis, those two components of the thinking or how our mind operates, if we can have a balance between the two, that's when we're mindful. I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll share my definition. Yeah. <laughs> so mindfulness, from my understanding, is a psycho psychological state of awareness. So when we're being mindful, we are taking a break from 
the analysis, like he was saying, and therefore we're we're growing that mindfulness muscle in our brain, which exists for everyone. Some people have it naturally, and some people have to work at it. And I'd say probably most people have to work at it oh, yeah. to train their brain. And, and you hear that a lot in different uh, spiritual contexts because it's real. It's true. You have to train your brain. Otherwise, you're lost in the unconscious patterns of the past. Yeah, just the old habits run your life, Yeah, essentially. And part of being mindful is to be the witness to those old patterns. Right. Non judgmental witness. Yeah. And um, that's metacognition. Mm -hmm. Essentially, mindful metacognition is being the witness to your own thoughts. It's noticing your thoughts from a mindful perspective. So you're not judging the thoughts, you're just noticing the thoughts. And then when the thoughts don't serve you, perhaps you're overthinking, you're caught up in rumination, perhaps you're caught up in negative thinking. You, if you mindfully notice that, then you can shift gears. If you have this, uh, some mindfulness skills, you can reboot the mind, you can turn the thinking off, or you can re-steer the thought. And that's metacognition, which is super important and really a key to freedom. Because if we're trapped in our old habitual patterns of thinking, we're not free. We're stuck. And... But if we have that metacognition piece where we're the neutral witness, the problem is a lot of people identify with their thoughts rather than being the consciousness behind their thoughts. So if we identify with the consciousness behind the thoughts, that's an empowering place to be because at that point we can steer the thinking. We determine the thoughts. So we're in charge of our thinking rather than our thinking being in charge of us. That's what mindfulness Gives us. That's how mindfulness empowers us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So mindful living is the practice and art of bringing this into daily life. Mm -hmm. We um, we work with people um, in person, uh, on Zoom, on phones. We work with people to initiate practices that will help them in their own mindful living. And and here we share mindful living with you. So uh, mindful living is, is, you know, like I said before, it's for some people, it's super natural and and they just, you know, lucked out, (laughs) got the luck of the draw of souls and all that and, and are mindful naturally. But for a lot of us, we need to work it into our day and um, for me, that also means um, how I'm entertained, what I'm, what media I'm putting into my brain, <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah. it's all <clears throat> about who I talk to, how do I talk with them, um, what language do I use, how do I talk to myself. Yeah, that's a big one. What media am I ingesting? Yeah. What am I reading? What am I seeing? What am I listening the to? The mental diet. Yeah, and that's super big for mm. mindful living. What what do you do that you go, gee, I should stop doing that because it really interrupts my peace, you know? So mindful yeah. living is peaceful for the most yeah. part. Yeah. It's also just this great, like, like Monty was saying, the metacognition piece is really huge, yeah. you know, to be able to go, gee, I'm being judgmental. And, <laughs> and without... Continuing the judgment, right? Right. To stop and go, oh, oh, okay. I'm being judgmental. I'm getting upset. Yeah. And well, there's there's ways about this this metacognition that I I've, I've been finding really cool, and um, I know it's uh, from my understanding more of the Buddhist take on it, where you go, I feel anxiety. My heart is racing, my shoulders are tense, my tummy is twirling, I'm scared, I think I'll be okay, I'm taking a deep breath now. Mm -hmm. I 
I think it's called stream of consciousness or I, I can't actually remember. Tara Brock is, is someone I've been listening to lately and mm. she talks about this a lot and Gabor Mate also talks about this in Compassionate Inquiry. And I don't know if he's into Buddhism or not, but I, I hear that uh, realm of being the witness where in, in for somebody who um, experiences fight, flight, freeze a lot, you know, to to be able to witness that would mean that you can witness your triggers. You witness what the trigger does in your body, how it feels. You witness how um, how do you recover from that. You witness the mindful tricks that you put to work to to interrupt the pattern. Yeah. And in doing so, you're re you're physically rewiring your brain. Mm-hmm. So that's like proof that there's like a shift going on. Mm-hmm. That's one of the cool things of science, right? Yeah, is, right. Is this is a super ancient, ancient technique, like as old as people are, right? But now we have modern science, and they finally decided to study this stuff yeah. over the last twenty yeah. five, thirty years, and and what was like. Totally woo woo is now proven. <laughs> yeah, and the exciting part is is that we're at this place in history where we can consciously rewire our brains. Mm-hmm. Con- we can consciously Evolve. change the structure of our brains. Yeah, which is evolving. Mm-hmm. Frontal lobe actually gets thicker mm-hmm. through this practice, through yeah. these practices. Yeah, you know? and we. I should mention too that. The way we work with mindfulness is we believe in mindfulness on the fly. In other words, using these skills just throughout the day as much mm-hmm. as possible, mm-hmm. you know, and developing that play, being in the place of the metacognition just throughout the day mm-hmm. as much as possible. As much as possible. Yeah, right. And not being too hard on ourselves. Right. <laughs> you know, when we're not there. Mm-hmm. But noticing, you yeah. know, I mean, how many people in our culture engage in negative self-talk and they don't even hardly notice it because it's so usual. Deep. It's mm-hmm. been happening for years and years and years. So they just don't, it's just part of life. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't have, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm-hmm. We can, we can shift out of that and we can feel better mm-hmm. and we can have more love in our hearts t- for ourselves. Yeah. Which is really step one. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a hard step one. I I guess for me I would say step one is is noticing. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, um, acknowledging, witnessing the metacognition piece is really a step yeah. one for me. Yeah. And and the way that I work with myself and others, and I feel that uh, step two is adopting. And adapting with some mindful practices. Yeah. And there are so many. There are so many different ways to meditate. There are so many different um, movements to work with. There's different uh, focuses, breath, uh, posture, all of these. Yeah. It, it, it is so huge. One time we sat down, because 108 is one of my favorite numbers, and one time we sat down and wrote down 108 mindful skills that we were going to make something cool out of, you know. <laughs> well, I got that list somewhere, but I'm just saying it was pretty easy to make this list. Yeah. There is a, many, many, many mindful practices yeah. that but we I, can pick from. I would say the, the king or queen of the mindfulness practices is that, is that metacognition. Oh, yeah. That's like the foundation. Yeah. Without that. For sure. Yeah, and that's something we take with us wherever we go. And just a quick tip, something I use when I notice myself going into negative Mm self-talk. You know, it's like, I let's say I made some kind of mistake. I'm like, oh, how could you have made that mistake? Oh, no, you know. Mm -hmm. And just feeling that and feeling like frustrated and feeling perhaps guilty or um, shameful, Mm -hmm. you know, for... But what I try and do when I notice my mind going into that place and I mindfully notice this meta, this self-talk happening, I'll just say, you got this, brother. Mm, nice. You got this, brother. You got this, brother. Mm-hmm. You're doing your best, brother. You got this, brother. <laughs> you know, because that's yeah. the thing. We all make mistakes. And if we beat ourselves up 
every time, you know, it's this constant, we're at war with ourselves. Yeah. Where's yeah. there, where's the peace in that? Right. We're you know? really lacking peace. And like I said, this is a question of freedom. Do we want to be free from beating ourselves up? Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think we all do. It's just a matter of knowing well how to how to get out of that mm -hmm. and being willing to put the effort in. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about when I talk about all these mindful practices. I'm talking about beyond metacognition, like these, you know, um, shoot, I could go into a bunch of them, but I, huh? I don't want to because well, I want one? to just, okay, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one of the ones that has been studied, empirically studied, and all that good stuff is how to get out of fight, flight, freeze. And what what has been shown so to... So when you're triggered. Yes. Okay. Anxious, whatever. I lost my place. Anyway, uh, the idea is that you lengthen your exhale as long as possible. So the simple way is to inhale to the count of four and to exhale to the count of eight. And the idea is to not um, blow your air out really fast, but more slow down your exhale where you're purposefully watching yourself exhale. And it's, it's, um, if it's hard to slow down your breath, you can purse your lips and uh, imagine that you're exhaling through a straw. But the idea is that you are getting, it, it's, it slows your heart rate down very quickly. So if you're at a doctor's office and you need to get your blood pressure down before they, they uh, check you, you know, this is a really great breath. I mean, this is a really great breath for meditating with. Um, walking into the store with, you name it. This is uh, one of my favorite mindful practices. And I don't like counting because that's just, um, I, I don't know, I just, it trips my mind when I, it, I it's too mechanical for me. I, I don't like to count. So for me, I inhale a mantra once and exhale the mantra twice and for simplicity's sake, I'll share with you the most potent mantra, which is Om Tat Sat. So um, it's, it's pretty hard to chant out loud while you inhale. <laughs> so I'm not going to. But as I inhale in my mind, I'm saying Om Tat Sat. And then as I exhale out loud, I'll share with you that speed Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat. When you're working with the sun on your own, you want to imagine uh, that you are equally saying Om Tat Sat in and equally out twice, if that makes sense. So we'll just give it a couple breaths and try it out. How's that sound? <laughs> okay. So inhale. Um tat sat um tat sat inhale um tat sat um tat sat inhale um tat sat um tat sat Sat, um, tat, sat. We'll do one more breath. Um, tat, sat, um, tat, sat. And if you just did that with us, just notice how you feel. You might feel more content, more at peace, more at ease in your body. You may have felt some parts of you relax. So that's one of my favorite. So when I was talking about practices, I encourage that you pick a practice for the morning and a practice for the evening. And then you do your best to uh, weave them into your day 
as well. But to have the the bookends of the morning and the evening, and like I said before, there's many, many, many to choose from. What's your favorite? Mm, my my favorite practice. I, well, in the morning I do tai chi every morning, but. I try and take that Tai Chi postural awareness Mm -hmm. with me throughout the day. And I think that's one of my, and that's been empirically proven too, that good posture translates into confidence Mm -hmm. in in a clearer state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So postural awareness is a big deal, I believe. And um, it's something, like I said, I try and when, when I'm walking around town, I try and have my heart forward. You know, trying to imagine my heart's kind of lit up, my head's up, my shoulders are up, back, and down. You know, when I'm standing, my knees are soft. I have navel support, as you call it, (laughs) (laughs) as much as possible. You know, but postural awareness is a really cool way for me to just be grounded and centered, and it helps me be more present in the moment. Because the other day or a few years ago, actually, I was walking down the street and my head was down. I'm just kind of walking with my head down and I was worried about something that might happen in the future, (laughs) you know. And then I said to myself, what am I doing? What kind of energy am I putting out into the world? Mm -hmm. So I brought my head up, I brought my heart forward and I continued walking and I just felt so much better, so much more vital, so much more just... I had this knowing, this internal knowing that I was adding some positive energy into the collective energy of the world. Mm -hmm. That's another way of looking at all these practices. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of energy are we emanating? Mm -hmm. And what, in other words, if, if my energy is like, low vibration, if I'm full of anger and self-hatred or whatever, I'm emanating this lower type of energy Mm -hmm. that... Heavy, Yeah, and it connects up with all this other lower types of energy. And then, lo and behold, I I am part of the war machine, that part, (laughs) you know, at that time. sure. And I think collectively, if we keep that in mind, that we can be a part of this collective energetic reality... That it probably is a physical thing mm-hmm. that um, it, uh, it helps motivate me. But just by being in that place of postural awareness as much as possible, I just in general feel better. Yeah. I guess from a hedonistic perspective. <laughs> yeah. So these are uh, what he just shared is kind of how you carry it into the day. Yeah. And what I was sharing is is one bookend right one one choice of a book in but i'm saying that that is so key to start and end your day with mindful awareness well yeah and your your technique too is also a type a type of technique you can just call in when you yep. need it, it can, when you're feeling triggered yep go into a deep exhale yep. along with mantra if you want yep yeah and uh and then the other part of the mindful living piece and we talked about the media diet or the media mental diet. Um, another piece of this is contemplation and how do we uh, think with open minds and how do we look at this world that is very confusing and very uh, divided and uh, yeah. there's a lot of sides that we can pick on any given subject. Yeah. And how do we do this with full-on awareness? How yeah. do we make wise decisions for ourselves? We contemplate mindfully. So that's pretty much what the show is about, is us sharing our contemplations and us sharing our our mindful living vibe with yeah, you yeah. and we love um hearing from our listeners and um what do you call it um uh, interconnecting interrelating and i'm not getting the word communicating <laughs> yeah. with with our friends and our community um what what do you want to contemplate what 
what are you curious about? How yeah. is there something that you want to know about that? How do I look at this in a mindful way? You know, so yeah, you know, we're always asking for that uh, <laughs> feedback. I'm really not pulling the word that I want here. I don't know what it is, but well, interaction. <gasps> I remember interaction. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, and as part of mindful um, thinking, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, just just, a, just a play. Well, like, yeah, I say something, you say something back, right? Yeah, like well, that's I a mean, I sw- part of a mindful perspective too. I think this is important. It's something that's kind of lacking in our culture is a, you had mentioned openness and open-mindedness and an open-mindedness allows us to like notice new variables when they, mm-hmm. they present themselves. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe our, um, our belief shifts a little bit as new variables mm-hmm. present themselves. And another aspect of our um, perspective a mindful aspect is like a sense of humility, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. And and that le- helps our mind be more open. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, well, I believe this, but, you know, maybe I'm not right. Yeah. I know I believe it. And then if new variables come in, oh, I no, now I believe this. I mean, it's not a wishy-washy thing, but it's an open-minded thing where, and it's, a, it's living, it being in a place of humility. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, I know the answers. And then once you get into that place, it's it's like when people um, connect, they they believe they are their thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. So these ideas, your thoughts, turn to be super important if you believe you are them. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Know? And you don't want to like switch your ideas because then you like cease to exist. But if you just don't take your ideas so seriously, you know, it's like, well, I think this is true, but I'm not, you know, most likely yeah. it's true. It's but well, I'm just getting at like developing a level of humility mm-hmm. in our thinking. Absolutely. And it is important to have an open mind. And I think it's, it's an important component. Yeah. And I think it's uh, interesting that you say belief because um, in my mind, belief is like a pretty deep piece of yourself that sometimes you don't even know what it is, mm-hmm. you know, like how you act to yourself and how do you, how you treat others you may not even know the belief that is steering that ship, you know. But in in this kind of living, right, you pick your beliefs and then work towards them. Like if your belief is to that love is the answer, Yay. right? Like it could be a simple belief that covers a lot of ground, right? Yeah. Love is the answer. That's a beautiful belief. Right. Yeah. And And that's like, really ancient really ancient and a a lot of spiritual and religious texts talk about this you know Mm -hmm. loving the self loving others and but it's it's it can be really hard if if you've had a lot of trauma so picking this belief Mm -hmm. takes effort it takes an open mind it takes being the witness of your thoughts, it takes the practices that book in your day. It takes yeah. how you walk through your day. Yeah. Well, what you're saying is it takes willpower. It takes willpower. Absolutely. To, to like shift your belief if you're if you consciously wanna want to believe that. Yeah. And in the metacognition piece, starting to realize what beliefs are in the way. Yeah, exactly. And so this this work, no matter how long you've been doing it. There's always more to learn. There's always more ways of interconnecting with others. There's always more reflection that can be had on those unconscious beliefs that sneak up and bite you in the mm-hmm. butt, you know? It's Yeah. It's sort of like you're a detective when you're yes, when you're really absolutely. involved with metacognition. It's like, huh, where does that old habit come from? Right. Where does that old belief come from? And then you can yeah. like think about it and try and figure it out and see if it serves you or not. It's like, oh, I guess that old belief doesn't serve me anymore. Right. I'm going to let it go. Right. But then that's where the willpower comes in. Right. Because it's going to keep re-emerging into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. But when it emerges, if you reboot it or re-steer it consciously, 
And what you're doing is you're, you're creating new neural connections in your brain mm-hmm. till the new belief emerges. And then the new belief is essentially all these new neural highways mm-hmm. in your brain. Right. And then it's easy because you've done it. You've done the work. You've created new beliefs that more um, that you've consciously chosen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's important too. That's super important. I think because if you look at the media, you look at Facebook, you have all these people trying to tell you how to believe. And just our culture. Yeah. Well, the educational system, the whole thing. And it's like, this is what you need to believe. And it's like, wait a minute. I want to, I want to choose that for myself. Right. Yeah. And another piece that just popped in my head about that is that w- these things are just so deeply entwined that it takes a, a really big level of willpower like we're talking about a big level of metacognition and just being uh that humility piece the curiosity piece like maybe i'm right and maybe there's more factors that i don't know yet maybe they're right maybe we're all right and we're just missing the pieces that weave this all together yeah maybe reality is beyond words and concepts to begin with yeah perhaps yeah and i know there's more to that thought but i kind of lost it (laughs) that's where scripting comes in right jeremy (laughs) um yeah so this show just to kind of bring it back to the subject of mindful living podcast is is wrapping all of that up that we just talked about into sharing it with you because because we have um the more we communicate and commune with others in a mindful way, the more we spread this vibe. And and so that was our intention is to just bring this mindful entertainment, mindful contemplation, mindful music, mindful tips and tricks and share it with you. So you have something to, you know, it's like a TV show where everybody watches the TV show and then they talk about it at work. <laughs> It'd be really cool to get to that level of mindful living being the thing that we talk about at break with our coworkers and at dinner with our family and talk about willing a conscious evolution. You know, what kind of a world would we create if we could witness each other without judgment and yeah. and be curious on on what pieces of truth do you have that I want to add to my pieces of truth so that I understand more of the picture, you know, and just that willingness to hear each other out yeah. and, and all these beautiful things. And the willingness to be <laughs> compassionate to ourselves yep. and others. Yep. Yeah. So do you have any more thoughts on mindful living, what it means to you in this, this podcast? It's, it's Well, <clears throat> you know, the, the saying that, pops to mind is the path is the destination, Mm -hmm. you know, and if we can get on this path of mindful living, of metacognition and, you know, working it, training, it's, it's just a super rewarding path to be on for myself. Yeah. And I've seen it transform people as well. Mm-hmm. Other, others through Absolutely. my work. I mean, it's tr- helped transform me. And that's my job is I go out there and I try and help people um, transform themselves, mm-hmm. help people evolve their brains, help people um, become more compassionate towards themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a win, 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 actually. And I think something you, you've been talking about, the, the mental diet is a, is a, is a big component to mm-hmm. to to living mindfully nowadays. Yeah. You know, yeah. and really noticing your your screen time habits and yeah. And you know, and being kind to yourself about it, not beating yourself up. Mhm. Just notice how it feels. I yeah. I am one of those super sensitive people that <laughs> I can hear a scary scene coming. If somebody's watching a movie, I can hear it coming because, you know, music is so powerful. And, and, you know, young people in their music and (laughs) 
<laughs> and and the vibes with that and and maybe not just young people but i've got yeah. uh, my son is home and his his music selection sometimes is like uh. <laughs> yeah it's interesting they stun huh? me well, you know music. so it, it's like music is really important and it's it's actually hard to find mindful music and so I'm I'm always on the lookout for mindful music that's got meaning and 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 uh, soothes me and and encourages peace and calm inside of me. So um, that's why we sing the songs we do because yeah. they bring me peace. Well, that's essentially <laughs> why why I practice music is because yeah. it shifts the energy inside me. Yeah. The music is cool that way because it is it is a vibration. Mm-hmm. Technically, you know, the speakers are vibrating and sending these vibrations out into the world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's it's very directly a vibration and yeah, when when music is and it's fine to be open minded to all kinds of music, yeah. but notice how it feels in your body. Notice yeah. notice, notice the little pieces like does your nervous system like this? Yeah, notice what messaging is like sinking into your consciousness mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. I would say that's important. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's fine, you know. If if it's not actual mindful entertainment, mindfully witness the entertainments that you're yeah. engaging in, and just notice yeah, how right. does it feel, totally. and how did you sleep that night, and what kind of dreams did you have, and you know, just all that in it to. To become more, to bring this mindful idea into your life more and more. And the show has now become a weekly show. So we're um, bringing more and more contemplations to you. And we desire, our wish is that you share it with your friends and you share it with your family. And like I said, you talk about it. At break, at work, or you talk about it with your friends and, and you start having these mindful contemplations in your life out loud with those around you so that you're a part of shifting our culture's vibration. Yeah. And just be be that be that neutral witness, be the the consciousness behind your thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, know that you are the projector of your thoughts. You're not the thoughts themselves. And yeah. You know, that's that's a good way to it's like having a conversation with yourself. Oh, and we all do right. that, you know? You we all do that. It. Notice that <laughs> self-talk. Yeah, we all do that. I think that's so funny because I I talk out loud to myself uh, maybe too openly sometimes. And, and, you know, sometimes someone will say, you know, you're talking out loud. And I'm like, yeah, I do. I, <laughs> I know that I'm talking to myself out loud. <laughs> And I think they've they even said something at one point that the most intelligent people do talk to themselves out loud. I think it's because they're not worried about it. Like they're just like, I'm on my path doing my thing and I'm sorting something out out loud. So we all do it. If you notice yourself doing it, that's good. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I feel that we've shared a lot of specific tips with you today. So I don't know. Do you want to do anything else? No, maybe just review. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about what mindfulness is and we talked about that, the metacognition piece of being the the consciousness behind the thoughts Mm -hmm. and witnessing your thoughts from a mindful perspective um, we talked about posture. We talked about mantra and breathing. Mm-hmm. What What is that mantra again? Om Tat Sat. And you talked about if you're feeling triggered, inhaling and saying that once and then exhaling and saying it twice mm-hmm. as a way of um, coming back to equanimity, mm-hmm. which is emotional regulation. That's an emotional regulation skill, mm-hmm. by the way. So we talked about that. Mm-hmm. We um, reviewed the mental diet, mm-hmm. self-talk, how important that is. Contemplation. Finding space between the thinking. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's more. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a lot today. Music. <laughs> yep, mindful music, mindful entertainment. Being part of the solution rather than the problem. Self-talk. Yeah, how we talk to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and sharing. 
the, I think that's a kind of a key here is uh, sharing with our friends is really important. And uh, sometimes they may not know about it and they wish they did. And you could be that person to let someone know that this kind of support is out there. This kind of entertainment is out there. This kind of um, podcast exists and they might be looking for it. They might be um, wishing for something like this. So um, this could be a real gift that is very easy to share. <laughs> yeah, this this time can be seen as potentially really valuable if you, if you apply it, if you use it in your day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and back to that community piece, we'd love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. So uh, this is on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, you can go to our website, www.imi.earth. However you most prefer to communicate, give us a shout. Let us know that um, you're here with us, and let us know what you want to talk about. Let us know what uh, curiosities you have or what you're working with. What is your obstacle that you think that we could help sort out with you? So, Yeah, and we, and we, we are all in this together. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, all of us have issues. All of us have had trauma. Mm-hmm. It's like a continuum. So mm-hmm. essentially, we're all in the same boat, and... The way the world can potentially evolve as a bunch of us work together consciously on progressing. Mm-hmm. And if, if you use some of these tips and you find yourself feeling better, we're connected. Yeah. We're connected. Totally. We're like the little neurons that find each other and make a new <laughs> thread of nerves. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. I, I hope that that was uh, worth your time and <laughs> we enjoyed sharing with you. And I think I'm feeling pretty complete. Yeah. Are you feeling complete? Yes. All right. We'll be back next week at uh, possibly noon. We'll let you know. And you can always sign up for the newsletter, imi.earth. And um, I definitely will not be sending you too many emails because... I'm not very good at sending them at all, so (laughs) I'll do my best. We shoot for once a week. (laughs) Yeah, I missed this week, so oops. But we have lots of things going on, and uh, Monty has a book. If you want to check out some more mindful tips. um, Yeah, it's a book and a workbook, mm -hmm. the Mindfulness Handbook, fourth edition. Yeah, so you can get that through the website or on Amazon. Yeah. And yeah, may you find your peace, may you find your calm, may you, may you steer into the, mm-hmm. the mindful present moment and enjoy it. And um, yeah, my one, my one last tip is if you feel bored, uh, question that. Is that just what you've learned to call bored? Because it could be a really beautiful moment to just sit and relax. So just take some time. To be at peace today, tomorrow, next day. And we'll be back next week. Right. Have a productive week. Yeah. Namaste. Satnam. Aho. Amen.